Now, I realize that not all religious indoctrination is this extreme. This is a pretty extreme example, but even so, I still think that the less extreme indoctrination can be harmful to children, and let me explain that to you. Right. In the best case scenario with religious indoctrination, this kind of teaching sets a kid up with an inferior toolkit for determining reality. So let me put it this way. If you have a little kid who wakes up in the middle of the night and he's afraid of the monster under his bed, he knows the monster's there, he can sense there is danger, he feels the monster there, what do you do? You come into his room, you turn his light on, you say, come on, let's get down and look under the bed, look around. Do you see a monster? You don't see a monster there. Let's look in the closet, there's no monster. <laughs> Monsters are just stories from books. That's not real. That's just your fear that you feel, you know, that's, that's not reality. You start to teach a kid that there's a difference between fantasy and reality. And then when you throw religion into the mix, you're telling a kid, the monster under your bed's not real, but God, who you can't see, who you can't sense, who maybe you have some kind of a vague feeling about, but that's just a feeling in your tummy, um, that is real. So you have this weird schism in the kid's head that some things that look like fantasy are indeed fantasy. Hmm. Other things that look exactly like fantasy are totally real. Yeah. And how do you know which is which? You just have to have faith. Right. It's, it, it, how, can, how can you teach a child that and not cause them, at the very least, some confusion? Right. I, and, I, and I do know, obviously, that the more we talk to people and from, from our experience, that uh, you talk to adults, adults that are sincere believers, um, they silo, they firewall off this one, this one supernaturalness, and then everything else. Like you know, most most Christians probably don't believe in vampires and stuff. Right, I mean, right. I would imagine. Uh, and but they somehow uh, through part of this process, that indoctrination is so strong that all of the other things that help you determine what reality is from fantasy um, are are there uh, and, and intact, except right. for this one this one idea. But it's the problem that there can be so many other things attached to this right, belief right. that makes it strange. So, we, the the most these aren't these are not the most gross examples that you can have. Obviously, if anyone wants to think back to what happened at the end of two thousand one, you can get, uh, find a great example of what happens when someone who's been inculcated with a certain type of faith mm. that has other things glommed onto it, like for example that they'll self-sacrifice in the name of the religion is beneficial. That that can be harmful, and we're of course not equating. Um, we're not equating American Christians or the majority of Christians to that level of crazy. Uh, that level of crazy, I think, that d d divorce from reality. But for sure, the con your concept of God or most people's concept of God are unique, and they're included among them with many things than just God and Jesus exists. Right. There are other doctrines that la that latch onto there them. There are. There are other beliefs. So how do you doctrines. separate? Uh, you know exactly. So it, that's kind of my best case scenario, the monster under the bed example and, and how that, that creates a, a problematic toolkit for determining reality. A worst case scenario of even a more mild type of indoctrination than what you see in Jesus camp, for example, um, you're teaching your kids that they're being watched all the time, that they're being yeah. judged all the time, that they're sinners mm -hmm. and that they're bad people. And uh, if they don't live up to these expectations you have for them, that they're going to be tortured forever in a lake of fire after they die. Or you may be teaching them that uh, the end times are, are right now. Right. We're living in the end times, and that the, the world as they know it is going to end any second now. And, uh, and, a, and a large number, majority of Christians believe uh, yes, in the end they time. Yes, do. And it's, it's, a, it's a, not a minority belief. No, it's not. Yeah. And, and you know, you may be teaching your kid to go through their daily life with the belief mm. that a significant portion of the people they know and love uh, are just about to be killed and or tortured. Mm. How is this not harmful? I mean, children. Children listen when you tell them things like this, right. and they will believe what the adults in their life tell them. That's harmful. Right. So anyway, in my opinion, that's harmful. Um, point number two that I always get whenever I, I talk to people about this uh, is people tell me, well, teaching kids about religion is, is just taking care of one of many needs, just like you would provide food or shelter for your child. Um, I agree, certainly, that it is clearly a parent's duty to provide for the needs of their kids, of course. Um, but my contention is that religious belief is not a need. What we really have a need for as humans is answers to questions, okay? We all ask important questions about the world. Little kids are no exception. They ask these same questions in their own way. Um, why are we here? What's the meaning of life, if there even is one? Uh, where did we come from? What happens to us after we die? Um, why are we moral? These are all questions that are important for us to understand the answers to. Now. Any thinking person who, who looks at um, any kind of religious belief as a substitute for 
more rational answers to these questions, we'll quickly realize that religion doesn't really answer these questions. It opens up more questions and more questions, right. and pretty soon you're in this regress. Mm -hmm. And eventually, if you think hard enough about these things, you become an apologist because you have to sort of logically deal with the uncomfortable right. nature of all these questions that religion just continues to bring up. So religion doesn't provide an answer to questions. It's not fulfilling that need in a child's life, in my opinion. It's just like a comfy little blanket, and you can wrap up in it, and it makes you feel pretty good for a while, yeah. and makes it so that you don't have to learn too much about the natural world in order to find the answers that you're seeking. Yeah, and I, I think it should be it should be worth noting that obviously not everyone who grows into adulthood with this um, has sort of that, that much of a childlike attachment to the way that it is. Right. And I think this is going back to exactly what, it, what I said before. Human beings are incredibly, incredibly good at being able to, being able to silo off one belief from others. You know, it's just, uh, it just, it, it, it's, it's incredible how, uh, how people can be Christ followers and what have you. And like Francis Collins is a fantastic example. Right. How someone can be a devout, uh, a devout literalist Christian and also, you know, understand that uh, that uh, believe in and work for and be a genius in a field which basically refutes some of the basest ontological problems with the uh, with the theology with the worldview that's created there and i think it i think it's uh, uh, for sure it, it it i think it does i think i agree with you i think it stunts a child's ability to make to make this bridge into being an adult where you have to understand the world on the world's terms instead of understanding the world through a series of lies or comforting or, or you know or comforting uh, notions comfortable notions um, obviously it doesn't happen all the time right but for some people it I mean for some people like for example the bank robber who we just talked about like I truly think that these that it stunts people from being able to do what's right yeah I would agree with you yeah so go out I'm sorry go ahead um so I've got, yeah, the third point that I always get when I have this topic. As you can imagine, I, I have this conversation frequently with people. Um, that probably says a lot about me. <laughs> uh, the third one that I get, and maybe the one that pisses me off the most, is it's a parent's right to pass along their beliefs. Mm. Um, parents have an obligation to care for their kids, to help them understand the world and help them, them achieve their full potential and become whole individuals. I agree that, that parents have a responsibility but um, while religious belief may be very important to the parent in question, it may not be important to that individual child. Sure. And I think the yeah. reason why this, this excuse makes me so angry is that we yeah. have, I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but um, we treat children like second-class citizens mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. It's kind of disturbing. Um, the child has a right to make up their own mind about what they believe about the cosmos and about God and everything like that. And, um, anyway, it, it yeah. ticks me off, and, and I wish people would stop saying, oh, it's the parent's right, it's the parent's right. What about the child's right? right? This is an individual human being with a functional mind, and they have the right, in my opinion, to make up their own mind about sure. what they believe. Sure. It's, it's the thing of teach your children how to think, not what to think. I, right. think, I think a lot of people would say that. I agree. So I think we've got an email here through the, the magic. magic effect. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, it's incredible. I don't know how we do it every time. You want to uh, deal with the email? Sure, there? I'll I'll be the I'll ask you since you're the okay. one that's putting forward. The closer you look at it, at this is uh, this is Scott actually. Oh, this is Hi, Scott. Scott. We know who this guy is. The closer you look at childhood indoctrination, the less distinction you can discern between religion in general. A, a Christian soldier is as willing to give up his or her life as is a Muslim soldier for exactly the same reasons. It's g if God be on our side, who can be against us? This is where religion, fear, and superstition all lead. The end justifies the means. That absolutely may be true. I mean, I think the I think the rationalizations that even those kids were implanted with in that clip were actually pretty incredible. Where the where the girl was saying, "They're making warriors of us," and sure, we're in a kind of war, but there's also a kind of peace to the whole idea. Where they've already created this sort of rationalization, where um, the most horrible part of someone saying that, the most horrible part of someone saying, "I am willing to do war for this," yeah. is somehow ameliorated by. Uh, you know, some ameliorated by its other contradictory notions that somehow rationalize the whole thing. Right. Yeah. It's a little goofy to me. Yeah. Anyway, the point I was trying to make merely was this. Being the legal guardian of a person does not give you the right to manipulate the way that person thinks. And that's what indoctrination yeah. is. It's a manipulation of the way a person's mind is developing. And um, I, I think it's flat out just wrong. I think one of the most loving things a parent can do for their child is to accept the person they are, whether they believe the same things you do about the world and the universe or not. Um, anyway, on the, on the topic of 
parents manipulating children's minds, we do have a couple more clips that we're going to play. One of them is very brief. This is clip number two for the board, if you guys can cue that up. <laughs> Boys and girls, I need everybody sitting up straight, hands holding smiley faces looking right this way. Is there anyone in here that believes that God can do anything? God can do anything. We can just say, God... question uh, yeah, it is but i mean because we have some people who might only be listening to the audio feed of this the, right. the, the camp counselor who you hear speaking says is there anybody who, here who believes that god can do anything and what you see is this mother holding a little baby on her lap with a young child next to her and she picks up both her kids hands and sticks them up in the air for them so these yeah. kids sure. we believe it because mom <laughs> says so kind of makes actually, my point for me no that's a that's a common theme in this movie actually when the kids talk about uh the kids will say oh i remember dad said this like yeah. it's you can understand that the, 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 they're getting this from their parents and from other right, adults. Right. The, even though it sounds genuinely to come from them. You know? Now, another clip from Jesus Camp here that that shows that the adults in this world know exactly what they're doing. Now, I don't believe that that all parents who pass on religion to their children um, do it with the conscious understanding that they are manipulating their child's yeah. mind. But this woman certainly understands what she is doing. So this is clip number three for the booth. I can go into a playground of kids that don't know anything about Christianity, lead them to the Lord in a matter of just no time at all, and, and just moments later, they can be seeing visions and hearing the voice of God because they're so open. They are so usable in Christianity. If you look at the world's population, one third of that 6.7 billion people are children under the age of 15. One third. Where should we be putting our efforts? Where should we be putting our focus? I'll tell you where our enemies are putting it. They're putting it on the kids. Ooh, well, Unbelievable. they're a means to an end, obviously, at least usable? to her. Yeah. They're so usable, they're so open. I you can go into a playground and with kids who've never heard of Jesus before and have them thinking just like you, have them down on the ground, and hearing thinking, voices, having seizures. Having, and hearing voices, she said. This, frankly, scares the hell out of me that an right. adult can look at a child and see in them nothing but, oh, here's someone I can shape to my own beliefs. I mean, yeah. I, I believe, like, I, I think this woman is very sincere and that, that what she is, she thinks that what she is doing is what's right for these kids. I think this woman who leads this Jesus camp really honestly believes that the world is going to end soon and that she needs to save as many souls as she can. But it's not her right to go up to a child who she sees as open and usable and shape their mind into something that she finds useful. It's wrong. I mean, she knows that children are malleable and that she can instill her own beliefs into them. And I find that whole idea utterly repulsive.